Welcome to Exiles, a Gospel of Mark podcast. We're coming to you from Grace Church in Erie, Pennsylvania, where we're taking what we learn about ancient truths and the person of Jesus into our everyday life. You can check out whoisgrace.com forward slash Mark for the sermon and resources uh, that we're using for our conversation. Thanks for joining us today. So I'm uh, here today with our normal panel. My name's Danielle, and uh, we're going to go around the horn here and we're going to answer what are our favorite and least favorite communications methods. I'm a communications person, so mm. I'm very oh. intrigued by this. I Is anyone ready or do you want me to go? That. Do, do, do. Pew, pew, pew. We're going, that? We're going around the horn. That's, that's what <laughs> I heard. Don't, don't we have started. that as a button? We should have that as a I, button. That would be so I'm annoying. I'm afraid to try those buttons. I'm here for that. We do. Pew, pew. All right. Sorry. <laughs> See if we can just do them. My favorite form of communication is any kind of written texting. Quick, quick written not emails, not texts that have to scroll for five minutes, just like quick, succinct, written communication is my go-to. My least favorite is when I write somebody one of those things and they say, I'm going to come talk to you now in person. No. That would be my least favorite. <laughs> That's really oh funny. My God. <laughs> not really, but kind of it is. Anyone else? Introduce yourself. Don't forget to say who you are. Hi, Sarah McCosco. Hi. Um, my favorite form of communication... Marco Polo, which we were just discussing. Pew, pew, pew. Discussing. Disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. We were just disgusting. It is it. disgusting. Um, it's so disgusting. My least favorite form of communication is talking on the phone. <laughs> uh, that, is, that is difficult. I just, hmm. here's the thing. Like, <laughs> if you're on the phone and you're talking, and this is my own doing, if I'm, I feel like I never have time to adequately like sit down and have a thorough conversation because it, my conversations will never stay short. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be serious. Yeah. So wow. God would never call you on the phone. <laughs> no, he's texting me or Marco pulling me. Okay, got it. Um, but I want to also talk about the texting thing that you said when yeah. people write like a big long message. Oof. How about the people who have a lot of thoughts and they just keep throwing text after text after text? Oh, that's after text, hard too. And uh, it isn't just all their thoughts in yeah. one text ping, message. Ping, like, yeah. ping, 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 ping. there's an yep. art to it. You either Take like a you second hit, think before hit you the send. return and. Put a couple mm. breaks in a longer text, or you don't just send like fifty texts, but you do break it up. There's an I, art. Yeah, to it. I, to- there I is. totally know what you're talking you about. You got to think about it before you send. Like if you have other thoughts, just take a second before you send it and be like, "Is there anything else I need to add?" And if you have started texting me and you pivot to an audio message, whoa, watch out! <laughs> I got to get in the right headspace for that. Just give me, just know that I'm coming at whatever you're saying with a little bit those. of anxiety, <laughs> a, little a little sass, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I don't know what this is. Shout out John Tiernan. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. Chrissy so Kern, my my preferred would what be your name. Th- oh yeah. Oh no no. So my, <laughs> my name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace. Uh, my preferred method is text or kind of like Microsoft Teams ping or something. Te- something ping. Again, yeah. a short, concise kind mm-hmm. of you know written, uh, and it's great because then I can like. I don't have read receipt on, and I don't have the little bubble, bubble, bubble. Oh, I don't have read receipt either. So that you don't know when I've seen it. Big mistake, people. And I can like, (laughs) I can take a minute to think about how I'm going to respond to this sucker. So that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Uh, My least favorite is I can't remember the last time I talked to anybody who wasn't my wife, like on the phone. On the phone. It's I. hmm. I don't really pick up anything anymore, and I'd like to. I like to. Who was it? Hear the voicemail, so I know what I'm getting into. It's. (laughs) Yes. We're gonna sound like a bunch of. Don't ever call me. Yeah. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't the new, Don't call Sarah. Like, doesn't the new iOS have like a voicemail uh, AI right at the moment? Like it will type out what the person's saying yes. in oh, the yeah. voicemail mm-hmm. so you could pick it up while yeah. they're talking? Yeah. Genius. That's great. Genius. Yeah. Such me. Text me. Steven? I don't know how to answer this. Just, yes, you do. Well, I mean, yeah. I always have an opinion, <laughs> but I feel like I'm a little different from you guys. I, oh. I like... You are. So, yeah, Steven. I'm mm-hmm. Steven. Um... <laughs> I like to be prepared. I like to know what I'm walking mm-hmm. into. Yes. So I appreciate mm-hmm. the message, but I like to process. Mm-hmm. Like, I might show up. So I'm probably the person you don't like. Well, like, when, oh, when I'm going to message Stephen, and first, here he comes. When we five, first started working four. together, had we not had COVID, I think, just being honest, had, if we not had COVID, I would have had to be like, I would have had to realize this guy's annoying me, and you you, but you weren't. You would have only started to like me now. Exactly. <laughs> that's, like my, that's like my deficit. That's not anything you're doing wrong. Just to be clear, it's my own deficit. But yeah, yeah COVID kept our relationship. Oh, well, that's good. Conf- <laughs> Confessions of an Exile yeah, podcast. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I like I like to verbally process, but I, I don't too. I don't like the element of surprise. Agreed. Like, don't back me in a corner. 
because that probably I'll it's come out. I will. I probably will come out swinging. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, verbally. But. Verbally. And that's a good point. Not if I, physically. If I'm walking into a meeting, I do love a good agenda, so yep. I'm prepared. Yeah. yeah. That's me, a good. Me ahead of time. But Don't. the processing, the I guess my preferred maybe Don't would be sitting card. down in front of somebody and actually going back and yeah, forth it's with them true. with some preparation. That's yep. good. I just don't like the texting to be interrupted with verbal. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I have a mess. I should one clarify one. too, because my friends That's are going to be at me. I am the one who sends like 50 text messages in a row. Here we go. Okay. So I worked, <laughs> so I worked, I had a previous Before I get grief. And I'm I trying was, people. I was a supervisor and that's how he would. I'm working I'm like, on it. It was like two words. Three words, bing, bing, bing. bing, bing. It's like no. it's like instant anxiety, like mad. I feel like I'm like, how, how you feel when uh-huh. I come to your desk uh-huh. after we've texted five no, times. It's not after, <laughs> you know what I'm talking. You know the situation I'm talking like, about. If it's like, zzz, 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 yeah, zzz, like oh my gosh, someone's dead. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I'm working on it. Anyway, wow, that's interesting. That's revealing. Yeah, wow, that was revealing. Wow, that was revealing, guys. Wow. Well, I'm glad we made it through. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's great. Okay, all right, so. This week, we're talking about uh, Jesus, uh, Pastor Derek, talking about Jesus redefining who is in and who is out, which I feel like is obviously a timeless concept, but especially for today, especially like in America, our climate of like, who's saying the right thing, who's saying the wrong thing, who's identified by this, who's identified by that, like all the things um, this will this will break. This is breaking that down for us, I think, and breaking us out of it, hopefully. Um, so he gives us kind of three things that Jesus does um, to redefine who is in and who is out. The first thing is he includes those you least expect. So those people that you know, yeah, just you wouldn't expect to fit into his kingdom that they were expecting we're say, we're calling this a movement of misfits so mm-hmm. that kind of concept what are you guys thoughts on that <laughs> i think it's uh I, the he could you just contextualization there too right yeah. so so yeah. tax collectors and prostitutes you know uh so equivalent today would be like an IRS agent and a prostitute which is like <laughs> oh the poor prostitute yeah, well, they just can't the, there's continuity there <laughs> <laughs> they just can't get a break. But I think what's more, well, I, I think he talked about, but Jesus would would sit down with an atheist, with somebody LGBTQIA, with somebody, uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, somebody on the way left, somebody on the way right. Mm-hmm. Like the way he contextualized that, I don't know, like they each kind of like hit me a little different. Like, oh, geez, Jesus would. Yeah. He really would sit down with those people. And that, I don't know, we've... I think we all have a pharisaical tendency to build our nice little box and add, put our nice little add-ons on. And so, no, these are the in. Mm-hmm. Boy, he just, it's a continuity of the, the Jesus upsets our expectations in a good way. Like, who's in and who's out? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. He was the perfect example to me of active listening. Like, he sat with people who had, and it's like a, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to stutter here. Hi, go with me. So, <laughs> um, he sat down with people who you would have think that he would never hang out with and he actively listened to them and didn't judge them and didn't do anything. So technically, like we should be doing that as well. Like when mm-hmm. we get in a situation with someone who may have a different opinion or this or that or whatever, how are we supposed to pass judgment or how are we supposed to have an opinion about something if we don't take the time to knowledge ourselves on the other side of it? Sure, that's good. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. I love what I see with them all the time, and I was so challenged by this a, f- a few years ago. Um, but it's it's like Jesus is bringing us back to remember that everybody is made in the image and thank you, of God. Stephen. And so yes, we don't we don't have to agree, uh, mm-hmm. nor are we going to agree. And and yes, there is right and there is wrong. But what does it look like to love and respect? A person who is made in the image and likeness mm-hmm. of God, mm-hmm. and uh, and we had to walk through this with a, a couple of scenarios with some people close in our life who have had a um, some past abusive realities with some mm-hmm. family members, mm-hmm. um, and now they're older. They were younger at the time, and that family member is not necessarily healthier. Um, but how do you still respect the mm. image and likeness of God that they're made in, mm. um, but put up boundaries as mm. well? And and so anyway, yep. I just see where we usually 
we categorize and then we outcast. Jesus is gone. Listen, they're all made in the image and likeness. There's one of God. category. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and teach you and show you mm-hmm. how to love and respect this person who mm-hmm. is made in this way. Starting yeah. with that posture. So I just I love that it's it's such an accountability tool for me. I have to like when I see Jesus act that way. As much as my flesh doesn't want to act that way, mm-hmm. like it's a reminder. Okay, these people are made in the image and likeness of God. They're not like me. I don't have anything in common with them. They might even be wrong, and I might even be right, or vice versa. But mm-hmm. I still need to navigate this road because I'm I'm called to. Yeah. I'm called to yeah. respect the image and likeness of God that they're made in. That's good. So I, where I struggle personally on this, and I, Derek even called it out, which is what it was like a nice little gut punch. Uh, just. When you drive by someone who's homeless and they've got the sign on the side of the road, mm. my initial reaction is always, what are you doing? Go get a job, right? Like that is, mm-hmm. and I have been, I have, boy, I don't know if I'm ever going to overcome that initial like reaction yeah. on this side of heaven, yeah. but like that's someone made in the image of God. There's so much going on behind the scenes that we don't necessarily know, mm-hmm. like you're saying, Sarah, like, but if I never engage in conversation, yeah. if I never, I yeah. don't know. No, they're sorry. grab a meal and then go go take it to the, him mm-hmm. or her and like so that's that's somewhere where I really struggle and I am actively working on seeing first the image of God before I start categorizing and slotting yep. them where yeah. I think they should be. I mean, I think even within our own like Grace Church walls, I think we can have people that were like, oh no, oh no, here comes that person mm-hmm. and. You know, if I'm being honest, I definitely, I'm doing what you do to a homeless person on the corner to like a person who like is constantly complaining or Mm. whatever the thing might be. Or like, you know, you know, they're going to talk to you for 45 minutes about something and then you don't want to talk about it. Like it's, it it can be that tangible and can happen like that easily and that quickly um, for me. Yeah, that's really good. It's that reminder, like, you do not have the right to devalue this person. Right. Right. And are you by your actions and your choices? I I have the same struggle as you, Mike, with those who are homeless on the street. In my mind, confessionally, I always, I'm like, it is harder. At least in my mind. It is harder to beg on the street for hours on end than it is to go look for a job. But how, how how judging is that? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. um, mm-hmm. Because I'm assuming so much of my life on that on that individual, but it's sure. so easy for me to devalue. My second thing on that is I feel so paralyzed. So I'm like, okay, I can't think that way, but I also now don't know how to help them. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that's that's my that's my additional hurdle. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I just move into paralysis and I don't yeah. act. But it's like, okay, I want to respect them, but how how do I actually do that? Mm-hmm. And I don't. Often have I've answer. thought about no, well, now you just kind of get in my. That's my, right. I've thought about before, and I've never pulled the trigger on it. Maybe I should man up and do it. But like getting ten five dollar like Chick Fil A gift cards or something. Mm. Yeah. And then instead of giving them money, because you know there there are appropriate boundaries to be set, and you don't quite know. Sure. But, hey friend, go get a meal, mm. or better yet, maybe I go get it if I have time and stop by and share it with them and. Yeah, I don't know. So um, for the Erie area, just because we are talking about homelessness, and I'll go ahead and throw in. So in the Erie area, if I do have an interaction with a homeless person, I want to make sure they know where the city mission is. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's good. That's a good idea. And I'm like, do you know where it is? If you're do you need the address? Like, and most of the time they do. And I try to encourage them, please go there. Go to the upper room. Like, there's places that can help you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're not, like, far. So I do bring that up if that's mm. ever. That's good. We had friends. We've I never, don't have anything. We've never pulled the trigger on this, but I think it would be good, like especially if you have, yeah, if you have like uh, friends or family, you could do this with. They would literally get the like, uh, oh shoot, the Ziploc bags that you like take to the airport, the like court size or whatever. Mm. They would do like bar soap, yes, uh, gift card. It was like mm. these little, just fill it whatever it was like at the dollar store, basically there might be a toothbrush, there might be toothpaste, there might be whatever, and they would just get together one afternoon, make a bunch of these bags, and you just put them in your car. And then so you have like twenty wow. in your car. I love like you that. get together with friends, and then you have like you make a hundred bags wow. and split them up. Mm. And we've never pulled the trigger on it, but that's such a t- <laughs> such an easy thing. Just yeah. number one, it gives you something to do in the just mm. little thing in the moment. It also gives you uh, a way to interact. Yeah, yeah. where yeah. it's not that just sees dismiss. the value in the image of see, the person. Like I see the, you, 
you know, Mm -hmm. and let them say what they want to say. Let them be grateful for it or let them scoff at it or whatever. But like, you know, you're, if you feel compelled to do it, you can do it. You have tools at least the tool excuse would be eliminated. Anyway, Mm, um, speaking of this, the, so the thing that Pastor Derek flipped at the end of this point one was, so he's include, he's including people you least expect these people like Matthew have to reject everything that they're comfortable with in order to follow Jesus. And this would just be, an ex- this comfort thing is like an example. So anything that gives you like security and whatever, um, I think a lot of us in America just kind of, We've gone, obviously we've gone through like struggles and things like that, but a lot of people in America had the opportunity to just kind of roll into Christianity mm-hmm. when you look at the whole world, mm-hmm. right? And, and the, a lot of the things that people have to Why go through and whatever. But anyway, I just thought that was an interesting point, giving safety, security for following Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I think that's comforting to those who, like myself, can judge so often. Sure. Right? Yeah, like, well, good. we can't affirm this or we can't affirm yeah. that. Jesus called those individuals and right. those individuals did not stay where they were. Those right. individuals also, mm-hmm. those, you know, welcomed as they were, yeah. but they didn't stay as they were. Right. Um, and it's, and it was so Jesus's bad. job to, to do the changing. Right. Um, I remember sitting down and I know we're belaboring this point, but okay. I remember sitting down with a guy who was a, a drug addict, an alcoholic came to my church and, and I didn't hear God's voice audibly, but I remember sitting down with him. I was the lead pastor at the time. And it, there was just this compelling notion to just continue to tell him about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Where I wanted to to move to behavior modification, mm-hmm. well, this is what you should do, and this is what you shouldn't do, and hey, you really shouldn't be sleeping with this person. It was just like, remember to point them to Jesus. Like We mm-hmm. would meet every week for lunch, every single week. Yeah. And now he has his master's degree in theology. Oh like, my gosh, that's crazy. Mm. He met Jesus, and his life was just completely mm-hmm. transformed. And I'm not, I'm just saying it was, it was very... I'm tangible. I knew what I had to mm. do, but it was so difficult and uncomfortable because it was so counter what I would have wanted to do. I think what That's was good, good too is when you had that conversation with him, you weren't rattling off a checklist of things that he has to do to get to Jesus. That's right. You simply were like, just go to Jesus. Here's Jesus. It's so simple. Yeah. You don't have to do A, B, and C to get to him. Like, just go to him and he'll. And we've talked about this before. Sometimes yep. those checklists are the verbal Torah, right? They're yep. the things that were like, mm. Ugh, in order for me to hang out with this person, like they really need to stop doing this, this, and this. So let's stop. And it's a subconscious thing. Like it's not anything Jesus is calling us to legislate right. for him. Yeah. Like on his behalf. It's yeah. not our job to change people. It's simply our job to have a discussion with people and let Jesus lead that conversation, let the Holy Spirit lead that conversation, but to have Jesus be a part of it, mm-hmm. but not shove him down people's throats mm-hmm. and like beat people to death in a way that they're like, this is, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. Do we believe that Jesus alone is the challenge enough for that person? Right. If, if that makes sense. That's a good way to put So that. often we don't think that, yeah. but the, the person and work of Jesus is challenge enough. Like if yeah. you're truly pursuing Jesus, yeah. the change will come. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The change will, it has to come. Yes. It has to come. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about, so like think, I mean, the whole idea of come follow me and Matthew is up and out and like the yeah. same with around the boats, like yeah. James and John, they they walked right away and the whole identity security thing, that was, I guess this is just like Mike being open kimono here today. Do so it. Here's, open kimono. So I did from like a young Google age. Google that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Maybe that. Safe search. Um, so I knew from a young age, like I wanted to be a Marine. Yeah. And so I went through much of my like teenage years and at ROTC in college. And like, I grew up in a Christian home, but I was like, I'm going to be a Marine, you know, really made my faith my own in college. But my identity was primarily, I'm going to be a United States Marine. Yeah. And that was great. But following Jesus, eventually Emily and I felt mm-hmm. the call. I need to leave active duty service. My identity was so tied up, mm-hmm. not just in the Marines. That took a minute to have to unwind because God was calling me away from that vocation. I even attempted to just try to transfer. All right, well, what's my next vocation here? Yeah. I'm just going to throw it all into there. And all of a sudden, that wasn't hitting the mark. And it's, mm-hmm. I had to unwind my identity from not just being a Marine from my vocation, but recenter and find it Yeah, in God as a son of yeah. God, as a mm-hmm. disciple of Jesus. And that took years, and I don't think I'm all the way through yet. And sure. that, but that's the whole point of the challenge that Jesus come follow me. Mm-hmm. It was super easy for Matthew and James and John to take that first step. But I promise you, they went through a whole oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Discipleship. Oh, it's dip. one sentence about them doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then a like. But how time. long yes. was Matthew watching Jesus? Like I know he right. just jumped on the scene, but right. Pernium's a small place. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Galilee's yeah, he a saw small what was place. Happening. Mm-hmm. Like there's a void in his life that Jesus from a distance is challenging. Mm-hmm. Like how long was he watching? Right. So when and when Jesus and his sovereignty came up and was like, follow me, he was like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Like Such it's happening. It's happening. That. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it didn't solve everything. For yep. him in that moment, but however, he knew that there was something greater to be had. This is the answer. Yes. Yeah. Now the I got an A on the test. Now, now I get to study for the rest of my life. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We're crossing over into the next point, which is modeling friendship with outcasts. So we we can get into that too. But um, wait, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. So when you say like your identity, like you knew you wanted to be a marine. When you say that, do you mean like you thought your whole career would be like you would retire a Marine? Like, the, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I thought this was this are. is my path. This is what I'm yeah. doing. And this is okay, yeah. what brings value. Yeah. Mm. How I bring value. And yeah. turns out, no. Well, I'm sure it was. Well, you did for a season. Yeah. I just think that's how, so sometimes I think people think of uh, military involvement as like Forever. temporary. No, oh, temporary. Oh. Like, because so many people are in and out. Oh, okay. Mm. At least, I don't know, at least in my yeah. orbit. Um, but yeah, just so like if you're a career insurance person or whatever, like you are, like you don't, that doesn't have to necessarily be your story if you don't want it to be, if God doesn't want it to be. Hmm. Anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Uh, tangent, feel free to edit. Okay. Models, uh, <laughs> Jesus models friendships with, friendship with outcasts. Um, I thought the, the hard hitting statement in here was that you cannot love people that you won't have dinner yeah. with. It's so true, though. Like, when you see just in the disciples, the 12 that he gathered, mm-hmm. I mean, this, this, this was it. That, I'm sure this was their every day. Mm-hmm. Like, this was the challenge. Yeah. You have a zealot who is so passionate, loves Israel, would die for Israel, military conquest, and he's hanging out with a guy who is a traitor of Israel. It would be so frustrating. A tax collector. Right. I'm a Jew, but I've sold my soul to Rome. And like these people are doing life together. together. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Like we're, the, guys, we're going to Matthew's house. We're going to what? Who? Correct. <laughs> Could you like I, We're going to what? We're going over to Yeah, we I, see we see the religious leaders a stir in a tizzy, sure. but could you imagine like the internal conflict? Mm. Like no. Peter, like I just started following this guy, and now this guy has chosen a traitor, and I'm at his house, but I want to be loyal to Jesus, but I'm at this house. Like, we don't get that account, but I'm sure it had to have existed. Mm. Like, um, But there's this this idea as well that Jesus is calling them to a deeper faith. Mm -hmm. You have to trust me, guys. This doesn't make sense right now. You have to trust me. Um, And and it's just – it's – such a parallel to our life. So yeah, we, we see the the Pharisees respond, but I just think about that everyday conflict that those Oh my God. I'd be sitting there thinking, navigate. okay, we're probably doing this because he's a task coach, so he's probably connected to this person. He's probably okay, so we're probably right, trying right, to get right. into there. Yep. Like I would be oh. I'd be all strategy. I'd be like, oh da 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 oh 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 I get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh like that makes sense. It. I'd yeah. have to like reason yes. it out. I'd be so uncomfortable. Yeah, and you're like, well, I don't get why the prostitutes are here, but um, <laughs> oh, but right, yeah. I guess. <laughs> that'll make itself known. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's hmm, that's super. I I'd probably do the same thing. That. Like, why would okay the influence and the, mm-hmm. but again, going back to the trust no, would not be there Jesus either. says no. This is a dearly loved child of mine, mm-hmm. and we're gonna. We're, I've got big things planned for him. Yep. Yeah, and we're thinking a strategy. He's thinking about image. He's thinking yeah. about yeah, love, yeah, love, and yeah, yeah. I, we have these we have these uh, neighbors that we're trying to be intentional about, um, and one set of them we've had over for multiple meals, and it, I, we have a deep like respect and love for them. The other ones we haven't done that yet. Mm. It's more uncomfortable. Mm. It's more chaotic, and we lo- we like the kids and love that the kids play together but there is a marked difference between the people we've had in our home and the ones that we haven't mm. i'm just putting that out there like i'm saying like that is a true statement we don't like love those people yet mm. okay. we can yeah like i can see it happening but yeah there's just this action we pray 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 obviously like do it in with discernment and whatever but like it's different and I don't think it has, you don't have to immediately have a no, sense of love for them. There's an intention out. Yeah. I mean, 
There's affinity. There's all kinds of... So we're doing with our Pray for Eight. We're doing the donuts in the driveway, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. invite your neighbors over, have some donuts or dessert or whatever you want in your front yard. And, and I'm a pastor and I had to like overcome a barrier to be like, I'm actually going to go invite... I know some neighbors well, but these other ones that I've been praying right. about, like, yeah. whoa, I got to actually overcome this like emotional barrier to invite them. And I'm a freaking pastor. Right. Like what? Yeah. Sometimes we're in meetings where we're planning things like that. And I'm like, uh, okay, hopefully other people will do this because <laughs> I can't get there yet. You know what I mean? Isn't it so funny though? I, so I think having worked at a church for mm-hmm. the majority of my life, mm-hmm. I I get a sense, and what you're saying is yeah. so true. Like, I get home, and I'm done. Yes. You just got to, You know, like, especially yeah. carrying the title as a pastor, like, you're like, oh, well, I could have done this in my nine to five, but they were working, you know? Right. Like, oh, I just, I want to, you know, I want to be able to take the jacket off. Turn yeah. off. So, but mm-hmm. now I can, Shut and down. it's it's just so funny mm-hmm. when you work at a church, mm-hmm. how your brain will justify oh, being justify. able to not be part of the mission that God has called us to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we prepped everybody else. We set everybody else up. Like, it's great. Now go. Yeah, if I can get 10 people to do it because of something I did at work, that will eventually count yeah. for me at the end, right? <laughs> and that is not what Jesus modeled. Satan is, he's, he's he a crafty a dummy. one. Yeah. He's a crafty one, that one. And if I'm early honest in regards to what you guys are talking about, I think what I fear most and and being around someone like I don't know, or we may have different thoughts about things. For me, my biggest fear is the awkwardness. Mm. Like if, when we come together, are we going to have anything to talk about? Mm. Is it going to be weird? Am I going to say something wrong? Am I going to make them mad? You know, is this going to be the one, one and done? Like mm, we're going to, yeah. we're going to interact and I'm going to ruin it somehow, or I'm going to say something like really awful. Like, and it's the fear of just that awkward like, yeah, that's should, I have, should I have icebreakers like before I go in? Like, a, have you ever couple? seen that? There, I think it's like, like an what's your favorite color? Yeah, of like the older lady. <laughs> what is <laughs> this? It's Start so, over. What? It's so funny. <laughs> so somebody's recording this old lady, and she's like obviously awkward in social settings. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember. There's a bunch of different memes, but she <laughs> looks at the camera. And she's like, "Have you ever had crispy?" Oh my gosh, that's my sister's favorite. Is Megan, it are you listening? <laughs> and, then, and she's just like. <laughs> Awkwardly, like, it turns away hilarious. from the camera, and then there's like silence. I'm like, yes. that's my life. Yes. That's, that's me. That's me. That's yeah. me. Yes. 100%. Yes. 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 Honestly, the fact that we can carry on a conversation in this podcast is astounding. <laughs> my sister is <laughs> thrilled right now that you brought that up. She loves that. Is it crispy? It's <laughs> so funny. Was it crispy? I've never seen anything. Yeah. You got it. And then she, I'm sure if you yes. Google it, you'll find it. I'll, I'll, guys, I'll Google it. Don't old, even worry about it. Old Lady Krispy Kreme. So, I thought you were going to go in a different direction, but the point of uh, <laughs> not but the Christmas. Tell me where you thought you were going to go. Not the go, Well, because I, I have that fear also, yes. the awkwardness fear. I also have the fear of rubbing off on each other in the wrong direction. So, like, am I? Do I have to like let go of some things about me that I believe in or whatever to be accepted by that person, so that at some point maybe they would accept me? I I, I tend to like. Yeah, you know, put myself under or whatever. Not in a spiritual way, in a self-deprecating way. Um, so, like, there's that thing I think where we want to like protect ourselves mm. from quote unquote like unclean, clean. I think Derek, that's the way Derek was putting it. Like when, G- but when Jesus interacts with these people, he's bringing the positive to their negative versus them bringing the negative. Like he mm. didn't become unclean when he healed a leper. Yeah, the leper was healed. And neither do we. Neither do we. Because we have the spirit of God in us. Right. We don't become unclean. We have the, yeah, we yes. have the ability to do this in a way that, you know, reflects him. Hmm. I, don't, I don't have any, that, I don't know why I even said that. No, I know that's, but it's valid. Like it's a, it's a very true thing. And I think it to go deeper in it, I think a lot of people are afraid to be around someone that they believe what they're doing is wrong. They're afraid if I hang out with them that I'm going to turn into them. Or be thought of as a certain way. Or thought of that way. Mm -hmm. And it's, no, it's extremely, it's extremely real. That's, no, it's good that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. No, we can all like very much relate to that. Yeah, I'm always afraid of what people think of me. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so that's where my brain goes. But I think it's interesting, and I'm going to bring up a tension I felt growing up in oh. the church, mm-hmm. is that we were told not to hang around with those people. Ugh. Isn't that true? Yeah. And I get I like the vulnerable like nature drama, of someone's story, and if you're not confident in your identity in Christ, sure. but the 
the the common narrative grown up don't, in church yeah. was stay away. you need to stay away from those people that will make you dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be associated um, with yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I, that's <laughs> immediately away. that's the tension that I feel. What happened there? Because I see it in scripture. Why did that happen? And, uh, yeah. Um, and I just some I didn't like I don't really know how to reconcile that in my head. Even even as a thirty six year old male right now, yeah. like yeah. Uh, I have this tendency to want to disassociate and, I, and distance mm-hmm. myself because I was told that they will yes. make me dirty. And I don't think we're <laughs> I don't think we should be reconciling that. I think yeah. the I mean there are some very few exceptions, but for the most part, boy, I think I guess I don't see any need to reconcile because I think that might just be wrong Mm. and human. And I see in Jesus sitting there with prostitutes and tax collectors and zealots and. But what do you tell? Because I'm 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 thinking about about this as a a parent, right? Oh, jeez. Like I have a twelve. I don't have a twelve-year-old, but at some point I will have a twelve-year-old boy, and they're hanging about the wrong crowd. Like I think that's where the heart of it came from. It is. You know, growing Mm -hmm. up in the church that. And, and uh, that's great advice. Like, I yeah, don't you're want... building a foundation of who you are as a person. So that's, I don't know, maybe. But how do you reconcile stem- that tension? Well, it's right? also stemming from safety. Like, are we, were we told that stuff as a kid because they were trying to keep us safe, like legit, mm-hmm. like from danger? You're a child, like. Which is noble. Noble, Which... but even that can become an idol. Correct. Yes. Uh, oh, Safety is a huge idol. It's like. It's like I gotta keep the safe. Christian life is like a knife edge. Like it I feel is. like you can fall off either side so easily, and you just keep trying to scramble back onto the. It's so true. Like when we um, now, my brain's going all over Go the place. Let's do but, it. Um, Welcome to my. Like when we go on vacation. <laughs> yeah. What's the one thing we pray for? Safety. Safety. Our do we ever pray that out. God's will would be done on, on our vacation? I did one time uh, and our car broke down. Your car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what? You no, had great people no, and had a pizza. No, I didn't. I'm like, just joking. Like, I'm totally joking. That story needs to be told. But, today. I, but I think that <laughs> that exposes a little bit of the heart, right? Yeah. We pray for this hedge of protection. I don't know where that phrase came from, by the way. Hedge, hedge, hedge of protection on the way to Disney World. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't I, I just think it exposes the heart mm. a little bit mm. that we're, we, we tend to you know, we want to be safe and we want to yep. be comfortable. And we want and to be comfortable. I mean, it's true. Instead, we're just, okay, God, whatever you got for me on this vacation, I'm all in. Like, let's do it. And Derek mentions the boundaries briefly, like, you know, in his message, you know, boundaries, of course. I guess for me, the people, if there's someone within my life that I have, you know, either had a falling out with or they did something that was a safety concern or, you know, things like that, where you do feel that, okay, this is actually dangerous. I, my mentality is always the door is not closed on you. It's just kind of sitting against the door frame. Mm. It's like always kind of cracked. I will love and pray for you from afar. And I hope the best for you, but it's on it. I don't, I, but for my own safety, mental, et cetera, I can't be close knit with you in my everyday. Mm. So hmm. is that wrong? I, I don't, I mean, am I like, I, I mean, you kind of, yeah. Again, it goes back to that whole relationship thing. Yeah. The whole, the whole relationship thing, right? I, I think it's just your individual discernment. I I'm mean, not, so, yeah. so we at Grace Sites, we're going to, uh, the staff, we're going to start volunteering kind of at, at a downtown spot. Emily and I talked and I was like, I'm going to go, do you and the girls, my almost four and two year old, do we see if we can bring them? Mm-hmm. That is not a, necessarily quote unquote you know safe by some measures of standards but Mm -hmm. do we feel comfortable enough to accept a little bit of risk for our four and two year old in order to show love and that the people that we're going to go serve we we the image of god is enough there that we're going to show them the respect by bringing our entire family yeah but we had a boy that was a discussion that is that would be i mean like okay if you're an alcoholic like your your mission field's probably not a bar true right probably not right so that, that that's right Let's be smart about what we're doing, but... And if you're in an abusive relationship, right. your mission feels yeah. probably not the abuser. Probably mm-hmm. not. No. Yep. Right. Probably and not. so and if, if, we're talking about something that's multifaceted right. here. Yeah, totally. And it, we can't just blanket statement and lump right. everything No, no, no. Out. And if, there's some, if there is someone that you do have to set boundaries with, how you behave about that person yeah. is also a testimony to how Jesus would do it. Agreed. Like if you're constantly slandering them and dragging them through the mud it's and not calling, right. that's not how he would mm. behave. Yeah. It's okay to be like, we're no longer friends or we're no longer, you know, I don't speak to this family member or whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope them the best, but you know, and I say kind, you know, a kind thing and let it drop. Like don't, yeah. 
you know, good. tear them apart. I think one of the things that Christians are real is real are really good at is the whole like, um, hey, I I have guys, I have a problem with Mike. Can you two help me talk oh, about yeah, yeah. that? Process talk it. about that. Process Can I pray it? for a very long time? <laughs> And let me like impart my feelings on you. And then if you would like to pray with me, that'd be great. Is that an that analogy stuff, or? That's an, no, she has a problem I'm confessing. With me. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> by the way, of you, you'd never know about it, duh. Um, no, but like we're so, 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 so good at that like division stuff. Like mm -hmm. it, you have to watch that stuff like a hawk in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the prayer meetings at church are actually mm -hmm. the gossip meetings at right. church. Like, right. oh, I just want to tell you 15 people to pray for somebody that right. I'm having an issue with. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful. And you have the person that's like the unspoken, like they give all the details, but they don't really give the details. And you're like, uh, what? <laughs> it's you're like, up. well, that was a way. <laughs> but I really want to know how to pray specifically. So can you? Yeah, can you? Can you be a little bit more clear? <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, that's, we're bad with that. But yeah, like I think just using discernment in these areas that you're like reaching people. I mean, a lot of times too, I'll let people around me and I will like go to those extremes like, Oh, you know, alcoholic in a bar, blah, blah, blah. And I know in my head, I'm literally thinking of a person that is of no danger to me that I can go have mm. longer conversations with. Yes. Yes. And that's the truth of the matter. It's not necessarily the extreme. It's not. Right. And for some people it is. Yeah. But for most of us, go talk to the person that's mm -hmm. screaming the F bombs in the in on the sidewalk. Yeah. And go have go start having conversations with that person. Because mm -hmm. their life is not probably good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's, so I think Derek did a great job as well um identifying the wine the wine the wine the wineskins. The wineskins. Oh, um and part. just how this like this kingdom of God is not going to fit into what we've built. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to remind ourselves of that because yeah. we're great at systematizing. Mm -hmm. We're great at saying this is what it should look like. Mm -hmm. This is what it ought to look like. Mm -hmm. But Jesus stepped on the scene into a religious system that was very well established. And he says, it's, it's, it, it can't look like that. Right. In fact, if we try to fit it in there, it's going to burst. And it did burst because they killed Jesus. Right. Um, and so I think we need to remind ourselves that should be an accountability tool for yeah, us. Yeah, that's good. That if if you feel the tendency to make it look like something, then you're you're perhaps walking down a dangerous path. Mm. Um, that we need to be willing to be open enough to to say, yeah, Jesus might be calling me in that direction. Mm -hmm. Jesus might be calling me to that neighbor. I would say absolutely not. He's mm -hmm. not going to call me to that neighbor. I don't have anything in common with that neighbor. Well, that's mm -hmm. probably the neighbor he's going to call you to. That's probably the one, yeah. Um, if your wineskin's going to burst, then maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe that's... Uh, Cardi Lou. Cardi Lou. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of yeah. people that have come up to me uh, and just said Gardy Lou. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Nicely played. I bet. Nicely played. Reader, listen to our earlier podcast. If you're lacking context. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's good, Stephen. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So the other, the third thing, and we're getting there, is to prioritize relationship over ritual, um, and that's this is why the the fasting thing I think is coming up in this sequence too um, of reading is just is a good example of a ritual and how to how to flip that. I struggle that. with it big time with fasting. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it, and look like <laughs> but probably gonna be something that him and I discuss when he's ready for me to like start diving into it. I went through joy, you know, like I didn't understand joy. And I was like, hey, <laughs> I don't understand joy. And then a whole year went by and literally just one random day in the car, God was like, okay, it's now time to notice how much joy you have over the last year. And I'm like, okay. And we did. And we had a whole thing in the car and it was great. And that comes. So I think fasting is something that I need to bring to the table because I I don't think about it. I fasted when I was small, growing up in church. It was something that'd be like, okay, this Sunday we're fasting, or oh, the mm -hmm. youth would fast or something, and I'd be like, okay, like fine doing it. <laughs> but I don't think too fast. Yeah. Does anyone else like fast or struggle with fasting? No. Yes. It is do do it? Uh, a spiritual discipline that I've kind of rediscovered in the last okay. year, and so I've started to to kind of integrate it. And I, for anybody who's like. Jesus says when you fast. There wasn't right. no if. He says when. So when 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 you fast. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I've integrated it in, but it's it's there's a consistency to it, but it's not like every single week or something like that. Okay. And sure. I hold it loosely. If something mm -hmm. comes up and I need to pivot, I'll pivot. I started small with like just breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just and going through every, I don't know. There, there's a lot of 
we could have a whole podcast yeah. on, on fasting, but the idea was not to just go, oh, I'm hungry, but I'm hungry. Help me. Boy, I can't wait to, honestly, I end all of my fasts praying before I, I break it going, Father, I cannot wait till I never have to fast again because this oh. moment will never happen once we have the feast on the yeah, other side of eternity. Good. And mm-hmm. that there's like a looking forward mm-hmm. aspect that really that feeds into the joy Derek talked about, mm-hmm. the the relationship brings joy, the ritual brings drudgery, and there's actual joy to be had in the relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. Yeah, that's good. And I, I think the <clears throat> the key thing with the fasting stuff is that if you don't, I remember Derek said this to me like forever ago, but like if you're just doing it out of this like rote thing, you're just like doing it, get through it, move on, you're not really doing anything other than, mm-hmm. actually today, like you're doing like a, you're doing like a fasting diet or something for just that sake. You have to replace that with something. Mm -hmm. So whether that's prayer time or it's like a prompt for you or like whatever, um, or else it's just no, there's no point. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, you need to be trying to build that relationship. Were you going to say something? Sorry. No, not necessarily. I thought you were saying (laughs) sometimes. Okay, great. Cool. Cool. I will just say when I do fast, (laughs) I don't often eat breakfast. But when I'm fasting, you want it. It hurts. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm like, <laughs> I'm never hungry Mental. at this time of day. Mental, that's, yeah. But that's so well, and it's spiritual. Yeah, yeah. it's spiritual. Yeah, Here we totally. Go. Spiritual. Yes, thank you for yeah. putting that. In, yes, yeah, I needed that in my head. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, and I, yeah, we could talk about this for a very long time. Anyone have like uh, a great fasting story? Anything that oh, was like share uh, it with us? Oh, I know. Yeah, tell, I, tell us. Great well, I mean, I don't. Story. Or not, one that, like, I'm saying if anybody you, listening. Oh yeah, oh, tell us. Yes, oh, yeah, please, like, please, please, please. Uh, great fasting story. Yeah. Like, is anyone? Yeah, yeah. Write us in. No, no. I oh, kind of okay. have one. So when I was, it was a long time ago. It was the. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Bye. Great. <laughs> I will say when I fast, I, I. When I fast, I do still drink coffee. And that's a shout out to the somebody who submitted a comment about our podcast who agreed oh, yeah. with me that the best coffee comes from a pot that's never been washed. Shout out, friend. Mm. And then tips and stuff too. I did try Celsius since since uh-huh. we talked. I, I got very excited. You, you mm-hmm. got very excited. Yeah. I did. I saw him drinking it, and I literally jumped over. No, I'm just kidding. I jumped over the tech booth at Harbor Creek and like gave him the biggest hug. I was like, "Welcome to this side. Welcome." Do you and what do you think of it? I didn't. Did you go to hate sleep it. that night? I, I, well, yeah, I always drink it kind of late. I never so have good. a problem sleeping ever. Wow. Ever. God ever. bless. Um, <laughs> It wasn't like, yeah, I didn't feel healthy drinking it. I will say that. But <laughs> when, she said, when she said she felt the zing on her teeth or whatever, I was like, yeah, it's probably smack isn't. in the teeth. Try the powder. What? I have some in I my, don't. that goes in the water, in your water. <laughs> Come to my office. I have a, a brand new oh, box. Wow. Okay. Oh, no. If you hmm. are interested. And save us, Daniel. <laughs> joy. Joy. Um, God is for your joy. Satan is for your misery. And the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I I want to talk about my joy story. I want to Go. tell this because this is like such a big deal. I could never understand joy. I could not wrap my head around it. Joy to me was happiness, which is absolutely two different mm-hmm. things. And what are the two different? I so feel that people- happiness is a feeling. Joy is something that God provides. So for me, I just could not. No matter what happens in your life, you will always have underlying joy with Jesus. Mm-hmm. No matter what, and there's a peace with that. Mm-hmm. So September two years ago, I lost my mom, which was the most traumatic thing I've ever been through in my life. And I could not, I, I have, I have to say that when she died and I watched her die and the whole thing, I clung to Jesus for my life. Mm -hmm. Like I would literally envision his beautiful white robe at his feet. And I'm sitting at his feet, like clinging to his robe. I just, I was so desperate in the grief and at that moment, he was like, okay, here we go. We're going to learn joy now. And he took me through a year, the first year after losing my mom. He took me through understanding joy. He, he taught me how to see if you focus on him during something that is so insanely painful or traumatizing or whatever, you are going to find joy in it. Mm. So I'm telling you, anyone who is going through anything, whether it's grief, extreme despair, whatever it is, like shout out to him and just say, let's learn about joy and he will walk you through it. And like I said, he did it on his own time. It took about a year. And what's really funny is I was working here. I had started working here at the time. And right around the time that he started presenting what we've been through and what I was learning about joy, 
I it was around Christmas and Janine brought me bought me a sweater that said joy. Oh cute. Mm. And so like how these little things like all tied in together, like it was it was very, very cool. So I needed to share that because yeah, it's a very it's a very, very real thing. If you don't understand it, ask Jesus, he will he will teach you it. Happiness is temporal. Yes. Joy Forever. is is well. a, it yeah. it continues beyond. And I think that's a good thing to call out is if you like trust Jesus, you have a relationship with Jesus, there's there's positives on this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. The best yes. is yet to come, but you will have joy. And my challenge to those who quote unquote follow Jesus but have no joy and it's drudgery mm -hmm. and it's rote, friend, I would evaluate. Yes. Do you have a faith? that really clings to Jesus, mm -hmm. or are you just doing a religion? Because right. there is yes. joy yes. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yes. good. Even if things are hard. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, discipleship question of the day. How does this picture of Jesus compel me to live differently? Now, we're repeating these questions, so I don't want you guys to not hear them anymore. Um, but as we're going through this study, We'll, we'll morph them as we continue, but this is the one we're sticking with right now for when Jesus shows himself as son of God and son of man. How does this picture of Christ compel me to live differently? Um, Pastor Derek gave us a bonus uh, question. Uh, next step, who is an outcast Jesus is prompting you in your life to invite to dinner? We were going to expand on that a little bit, give a little baby step to dinner, maybe the donuts. So we're doing... Donuts in the driveway. So you can, yeah, just like have donuts or pumpkin carving or do something in your driveway, have some neighbors over. Um, I like to always say, yeah. the first person that came to your mind, that's probably the person. I know. With with a caveat that. I know you weren't so talking long, to me. So but long as they're safe. <laughs> so long so as, they're as they're safe. safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That the first name is probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, you know what? If you need like a safety net, Get with another family at church. Have yeah, them come to yours. Yeah. You go to theirs. You don't group thing. Yeah, it could be a group yeah. thing. You don't have to live near each other. You can just help each other. Bring, like you bring the donuts for them. They'll bring the donuts if you're for you. An like introvert, partner bring up. an extrovert. Bring an extrovert. Oh, please. <laughs> or bring like an activity to do. Yes. Like mm -hmm. you know something that you can talk people through or do with people. Yeah. Hundred percent. I love well, a good icebreaker card. Sure. I can buy them on Amazon. Okay. Oh wow. Yep. Oh, okay. just sponsors. Ah. Wow. Maybe like, we'll put those in our uh, links. On the webpage? Or we can On the start webpage, yeah. Just drawing from it for oh. our podcast. Uh, that's okay. We don't need more. We don't need more <laughs> fodder. We need less. Um, okay. So that's it for today. I think next week we're going to talk, uh, we're going to be talking through Mark 2, 23 to 28. If you want to uh, read that, um, it's going to be about Sabbath. So. Also, we will literally do a whole podcast on Sabbath, I think. Mm. Which will oh, be fun. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. As a reminder, whoisgrace.com forward slash Mark for all these resources we're talking about and to get caught up with sermons and whatnot. Thank you guys for joining us today. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.